Here we've got a Solis 3.6 solar grid inverter and it won't start. So let's just see if we can see the screen. Initializing. See that OV10 and the alarm is on. So we're just going to have to dig into this and see if we can find anything. So I've undone all the screws and the four long ones go there and there through the heat sink. And then it's a matter of flipping it back over again. The wires are that end. Let's just turn this round a bit. So we should be able to lift it up from that end like that. Okay, and we've got a ribbon here. Okay, so let's just unclick that ribbon. And hopefully we can just sit that like that. Grand. Now, when Lee was here a few weeks ago, we had uh, a bit of a fixothon going on. And if you remember, Lee, well, we did a video about Lee fixing his air source heat pump. So we had. Um, temperature sensors in our mind so, so um, NTC and PTC negative temperature coefficient and positive temperature coefficient so we had the fact that there's temperature sensors so we were searching around and Lee pointed something out and I'll see if I can get the camera to focus on that So, just down on this side, underneath that top board there with the relays on, if we look down underneath there, we can see a little cable with a white plug on the end, and it's two wires. And what we learnt from the air source heat pump thing is that temperature sensors have two wires so I'm not sure whether I can let me just grab the camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about see not too bad there there you go that's disconnected okay so let's put this back together and see what happens so here we go We've got the Variac turned up. It's a waiting game. Loads are clicking and the Variac started to hum. There we are, generating. I was just pressing those buttons to put the backlight on. And it will take a second or two to start recording what it's generating. So it was that seemingly, there we are, 23. And that will go up. Seemingly it was the temperature sensor. Now, if you apply the second rule of solar panels... Come on. Which says never run 
any equipment beyond two thirds of its capacity and then the third rule of solar grid inverters is mount them in a very cool place out of direct sunlight not in the loft where there's plenty of ventilation then a temperature thing will never be a problem and if you're on top of that you apply the first rule of solar panels which is there's no such thing as too many solar panels then with the low cost of second hand grid inverters you can have you can afford to have several rather than having one grid inverter and loads of panels on it trying to make it work very hard and in the past people used to think it was clever to put too many panels on uh, an inverter because the inverters were expensive they put loads of panels on which means sort of during the winter and whatnot it's not too bad yeah you're not overpowering the unit but then you get a day in January where it's cold and it's super bright and the inverter switches off because of temperature on full load and after a short while you damage your relays so the second rule says only uh, never run beyond two-thirds of capacity so this would not be a problem with that uh, uh, sensor disconnected as long as you write on it two-thirds maximum so anyway it's working so it wasn't and now it is comments and um, considerations and just general thoughts much appreciated like and subscribe catch up with you soon cheers for now okay this is interesting this is the internal of an A4 um, grid inverter and this is solid aluminium and it's all cast in one which is really quite amazing anyway there is the temperature probe and if I put the meter it's a little bit tricky fourteen point six that's on twenty K so that is fourteen K as a resistance now this is going to be quite difficult okay so I'm going to have to hold the two pro uh, let's just have another go I'm gonna to have to hold both probes on there like that Okay, let's try again. I tell you what, let's just tie a knot in that. Okay, so what we want to do is put both probes on there to get a reading. There we go. Hold that there and then put my finger on that. So the temperature is, go so the reading is going down so this is an NTC negative temperature coefficient that's mighty interesting but it's it's actually very close to 15 K at about I'm guessing it's about sort of 18 degrees at the moment and hopefully you can see that going up quite rapidly so that's pretty interesting isn't it so I've learned something from Lee about these temperature sensors and we'll have a closer look at it at the moment but it's just the end of these pair of wires crimped into a little brass holder as it were which is then screwed to the the aluminium heatsink 
that'll do we've seen it before and it's slowing down now now it's getting nearer to its um, the temperature okay let's see if we can zoom down a bit there so that is the bulb as it were encapsulated and it's crimped into this bit of brass which is then screwed to that and of course it has one of those little two wire white connectors on it anyway that's just a bit of bonus footage